Hi everyone, uh, Matt Easton here of Scholar Gladiatoria again. Um, so I get asked a lot of questions about um, fights in movies, uh, mostly sword fighting of course, uh, because that's what I specialise in, but um, other types of fighting with other types of weapons as well. Um, and uh, so I thought I'd start doing a few videos about these from time to time, and the first one I'm going to jump in with um, is the duelists. The reason I'm jumping in at the duelists is because uh, many of us who actually practice swordplay, the duelists is one of our favourite films, uh, it's very popular and it's often quoted as an example of uh, good sort of realistic historical swordplay. So first of all I'll jump in at that point and address that, that particular uh, idea. Um, the duelists is very very good um, at showing um, the nature of duels specifically with swords in that period so we're looking at the Napoleonic period here the story the story the film if you haven't seen it is basically about two French uh, Napoleonic officers um, who have a disagreement uh, about something I won't won't tell you too much about the story uh, in case you haven't seen it yet um, and essentially have a series of duels throughout the film but the film also charts the sort of rise and fall of Napoleon as well so these duels are set within that context and the campaigns of, of that war um, and uh, it's Ridley Scott's first um, feature film, it's from 1977 um, and I highly recommend you buy a copy off Amazon and, and watch it because it's a very good film uh, and it's very beautifully shot, artistically shot it's got um, an early appearance by Harvey Keitel as one of the main characters in it um, and yeah it's got good acting, good script and so on um, now the fight director was the legendary William Hobbs sometimes known as Bill Hobbs um, and uh, Bill Hobbs is, uh, William Hobbs was essentially a uh, modern fencing instructor who also did um, uh, movie uh, choreography um, uh, choreographed fights, mostly swordplay um, uh, in, and has done a number of uh, well-known films, in including The Duelists um, and the, um, the sort of 1970s and 80s uh, Musketeer films as well, uh, with Michael York, um, etc. Um, so I'm going to address uh, the different duels in The Duelists individually, and I'm going to come in with the, uh, the second duel. I will actually link to it uh, below this video so you can watch it, um, either after or before, uh, my comments and I just watched it and made a few little notes um, to show really how whilst overall it looks like a realistic duel with small swords in this case um, a set piece duel 18th century style late 18th century style with small swords you know with seconds and and uh, people watching to uh, to see that the the rules are observed and everything else it is a good representation of the sort of spirit of this sort of duel uh, really the last sword dueling before uh, pistol dueling kind of eradicated sword dueling and then dueling pretty much died out um, certainly in Britain it did in on continent in continental Europe it stayed for a bit longer particularly in um, particularly in France actually um, and places like Hungary and Italy as well um, and uh, so it does give an overall really good Im uh, sort of impression um, of, of what a duel of this period with swords might look like however the details of it um, are, are basically weird or wrong. <laughs> I'm, trying to, I'm trying to phrase this diplomatically because I do think William Hobbs did a fantastic job um, and uh, at, at an event that I um, often attend he, he gave a lecture um, a few years ago and it was very interesting that he in front of a lot of historical fencing people he himself said that he actually doesn't really know much about historical fencing but what he does is he takes fencing principles, looks of the weapons that are going to be used and then sort of injects his own common sense into what the fight might look like which is fantastic, the result is that he, he ends up uh, usually making fights that look the part, they look historical, they look correct with that type of weapon and those type of clothes and that period um, 
but in actual fact the details are often wrong because of course he, he at that point in time he was perhaps guessing or only basing it on looking at some pictures from some uh, fencing manuals without necessarily studying those fencing manuals. So first of all um, we enter into the uh, duel scene and you can see two people practicing in the background um, and they appear to be practicing with small swords um, feel free to, to disagree but they look like small swords at that distance to me um, and they're, they're doing a style of swordplay that looks kind of like sabre fencing. They're doing big, wide motions uh, involving lots of what look like cuts, but of course you can't really cut with a small sword. Um, a small sword, for those of you who don't know, is somewhat like a modern fencing epée uh, blade. That is a triangular section blade that's stiff for thrusting, but basically has no cutting capacity. Now there were some small swords that could cut to some very little degree. In other words, they could give a draw cut or a push cut, a slice, but they're never really regarded as a cutting weapon. And in fact, if you look at the uh, the treatises that deal with small sword fencing, and in fact the 19th century sources that talk about uh, talk about um, the dueling sword, as they called it by the 19th century, um, they regard it really as a thrust only implement, and they're very light, very stiff relatively short, usually only about a 30 inch blade, uh, but they really are very very light, very 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 quick, designed just to give a, a poke uh, enough to make a nasty hole in someone such that they're either incapacitated or the duel is won and first blood is, is caused. Um, so the first thing we see is we see two people practicing in the background and they're they're doing something that doesn't really look anything like small sword. They're, they're sort of waving their arms and their weapons around a lot. And it looks kind of nice in the background. It's a beautifully shot, typical sort of early Ridley Scott um, panorama. Uh, it looks very nice, but what they're doing with their swords is silly. Okay, so that's the first thing. Second thing, uh, the two protagonists uh, face off. So we've got Ferrod, played by uh, Harvey Keitel, um, against uh, Dubert, who's the sort of hero of the, of the story. Um, and uh, Dubert is wearing a bizarre glove on his left hand. Now, I'm not going to say that that left hand glove, which is presumably for uh, pushing aside uh, thrusts at the body, um, is, um, is not correct historically, but I've never seen an example of one. Now, there were male gloves um, worn um, sometimes on the left hand in the sort of rapier period, 100 years earlier, 200 years earlier. Um, however, by the late 18th century, I'm not aware of anything like a left hand glove being used uh, for dueling. Um, and, and also, why would they allow it? This is supposed to be a duel with two with two small swords. Why would they allow th these uh, weird gloves? Um, and why would they allow Dubert to have one? Uh, it seems it seems a strange strange thing. But anyway, it's interesting to look at, and I like the detail. I like the fact that someone has obviously thought, oh, we'll give him a you know, funny glove on his left hand. I suppose it shows some kind of thought, although I don't think that it should be there. Um, so the third point is the engaging guard uh, that they face off in. Um, now, an engaging guard is the guard that you is your sort of default fencing position. Okay, um, so I've talked in other videos of mine about how you have with saber you have a, a um, an engaging guard that is called terse. There's cart. There's high second. There's prem or hanging guard, and um, these engaging guards are for saber, of course. Um, for for small sword, the usual engaging guard was with the hand at about. Um, chest height or sternum height in um, in cart, okay, protecting your inside line. And this was the standard French uh, small sword engaging guard. And I should mention actually at this point that the small sword was seen as a French weapon. It was uh, it was essentially developed in France and then spread everywhere from France and everyone else in Europe saw it as a French weapon but they, they copied it. Um, and so to some extent they tended to copy the French small sword masters as well and the way of using it. Um, so this this position called cart was the uh, standard engaging guard for small sword in France at the time. Uh, however there were other engaging guards with the small sword. One of them uh, was used by Sir William Hope for example in, in Scotland and, uh, and, and uh, perhaps the north of England um, and uh, Hope was fairly popular in his time, writing in the sort of end of the 17th century and beginning of the 18th century, so quite a bit earlier than, than the film is set. 
and and he has a sort of I believe his arm is bent. You best if you want to learn how to use a small sword in Hope's manner, then you would uh, have to visit Oxford and um, Dr. Milo Thurston, who runs the Lineker School of Defence, uh, a group who I'm uh, good friends with, and they do Hope's small sword very very well, as well as back sword and other things as well. Um, and his guard position is sort of up here, so it's a bit like a, a high second. It's actually quite similar to some sabre guard uh, positions that we see in the 19th century in, in British sabre fencing, uh, and perhaps a little bit similar to some backsword uh, positions as well. But um, what we see in the duelists is an entirely different position, I, I presume, of, uh, of William Hobbes's invention, because I've never seen it in, in a treatise, and it's with the hands very, very high in a position of, of cart. Um, and I think this is a silly engaging guard, especially as they're both using it. So the fact that they're both using it would suggest that that was a you know a, a done thing. But as far as I'm aware, it wasn't a done thing. That is not a guard position that that they used small swords in in France at that time. Uh, but by having the blade at the same height as the hand, it effectively covers you, doesn't cover you above and doesn't cover you below. When you have the hand low. Uh, let's try and stand up a bit high. When you have the hand low and you have the um, blade sloping upwards, just uh, grab a sword, bam, here we go. Um, when you have the hand low and the point at face height, you're now covering the upper part of your body, as I hope you can see on the camera there. Okay? When you raise the hand up and keep the blade at the same height, I'm now uncovered both above and below the blade. So it makes sense, this cart engaging guard, um, having the hand low, but it doesn't make much sense having it high. So, essentially that's the, th that's the uh, third thing in, in just that duel that I think is a bit silly, is the engaging guard. It doesn't really make sense, he should have used cart. Um, the fourth thing that I think is a bit silly is that they don't lunge and recover. Okay, so I've talked in previous videos about how when you extend your, you can't see my legs, but when you extend your right leg uh, forwards, you step forwards with the right leg and leave the left foot where it is in a lunge position. Uh, this lunge and then come back again is the recover. Lunge and recover is what uh, modern fencing, but equally what uh, 18th century and 19th century fencing was entirely built upon. And neither of them really lunge or recover. They both shuffle forwards and shuffle backwards. And I I don't really know why this is. You could argue maybe it's because it's uneven ground, they're fencing on grass, uh, maybe the lunge and recover is, is seen as a bit um, too extended, maybe they're nervous, they're not, they're not adhering to proper fencing form. But either way, they don't lunge and recover, and this is a bad thing, and lunge and recover was core to small sword fencing. So either they're not good small sword fencers, or, <laughs> or they're uh, doing something very unconventional if we imagine this is a real historical fight. Okay? Right, the fifth thing, and this is a pretty big thing, and I imagine this is the biggest criticism, uh, and this is the final thing I've really got to say about, about it as a whole, um, is that just like the fight that we see being practiced before the duel in the background, um, both the protagonists move their arms in very big circular motions. A small sword is a very light and nimble weapon that takes very small motions of the blade and moves in very small circles. When you move in big circles, you leave yourself incredibly vulnerable to, um, to a stop thrust or a time thrust, and uh, ironically, this is how the fight finishes. Um, but moving the arm around in these big, wide, circular motions, it looks very nice on the screen, but it makes no sense at all with a small sword. It, m it might make sense with a sabre, it might make sense with a single stick or a back sword, broad sword, various things like that, but it does not make sense with a small sword. And they're both doing it. And you could say, oh, they were both nervous and they revert to their sort of, you know, animal way of moving, which is more big emotions and more circular. However, it's not really right for small sword use, okay? They should be moving the tips of the weapon around, uh, but they shouldn't be moving the entire arms and hands and everything else around a lot. It's very flappy. And equally, and this is debatable, it looks like the, uh, the choreographer, i.e. William Hobbes, has put cuts, the motion of cuts in there. And as I've mentioned, the cuts with a, with a small sword make no sense at all. They will just get you killed very, very quickly and they'll do no damage even if they do land. Okay? They'll just scratch at most. So, there we go some things to say 
uh, about the second duel in The Duelists. But I want to finish by saying um, that the final move uh, that Ferrod actually wins the fight by ducking down, putting one hand on the floor and what's called a stop thrust um, into the opponent's kind of armpit or chest. Okay, and this is brilliant, that's perfectly historical, it's in lots of treatises, it's very well executed, it looks convincing, brilliant, really, really good. Okay, um, and so that's a good point at which to remind you all that whilst it might seem like I'm um, uh, saying lots of uh, disparaging things about this duel in The Duelists, actually The Duelists is a great film, and overall the fights really have a feeling, a sense of the fact that they are real duels, with real swords and using a sort of historical um, historical style of fighting. So in actual fact, in, or, in, although all those details are wrong that I've mentioned, the engaging guard, the lack of lunge and recover, um, I should also mention distance, but I'll mention that in another video, the out of distance most of the time, all of these things that are wrong, you can still create a fight which looks kind of right. Okay, thank you very much. Cheers.